Okay, welcome everyone to Safety and Health Week. Uh, my name is Anne Tenye, and I'm the President and CEO for the Canadian Centre for Occupational Health and Safety, or as we're better known, CCOHS. Bonjour et bienvenue au lancement de la semaine de la sécurité et de la santé. I'm pleased to say that we have people joining us from all over Canada today. One of the pluses of a virtual event, I suppose. It's safe to say that these days we're all navigating a new normal in our workplaces, whether it be remote work, COVID safety protocols that you must take, or the personal protective equipment that you must wear. Working during COVID has been especially difficult and stressful, and health and safety has never been more important or top of mind with everything that we do. Who knew risk assessments would become a regular part of our day, whether it's at work, in our communities, as well as at home. Everyone has a right to be safe at work, safe from physical harm, safe from harassment and violence, and safe from bullying and behaviors that affect our mental health and well-being. Our work environments must be safe and we also have to look out for and check in on one another, especially with so many people working remotely or in isolation. This week, all over North America, attention is focused on workplace health and safety as we celebrate work, safe work practices and the positive impact that a healthy environment can have on all of us. I hope this kickoff, kickoff event will be a good start to your celebrations. And without further ado, I'd like to welcome our special guest, Minister Philomena Tassi, who's joining us today to officially kick off Safety and Health Week. The minister has been a vocal advocate for worker safety, as well as a strong supporter of CCOHS. So I'm now going to hand it over to you, Minister Tassi, and welcome. Well, thanks so much, Anne, for that very warm introduction. It's always uh, absolutely fantastic to see you. Uh, I'd like to begin by acknowledging that I am participating virtually from the traditional territory of the Haudenosaunee and Anishinaabeg peoples within the territory covered by the Upper Canada Treaties, as well as the Dish with One Spoon Wampum Agreement. So thank you to the Canadian Centre for Occupational Health and Safety, CCOHS, for the invitation to join you today. I hope that you are all well and safe. 24 years ago in 1997, Canada, the United States and Mexico joined forces to raise awareness around workplace health and safety. 24 years later, North American Occupational Health and Safety, now called Safety and Health Week, hasn't lost its importance. Indeed, Safety and Health Week puts the focus on the critical role that occupational health and safety has to ensure the well being of all workers. This week is a time to focus employers, employees, partners, and the public on the importance of preventing injury and illness in the workplace, at home, and in the community. It's a time to encourage people to get involved, spread the word, and incorporate safe behaviors in their daily work. As the Federal Minister of Labour, I have made occupational health and safety, including mental health, one of my top priorities. The COVID-19 pandemic has made this focus even greater. We would normally gather in person to celebrate safety and health. It's unfortunate that we cannot, as I would love to be with you in person. However, we have gotten used to working remotely, as Anne has mentioned in her opening remarks. And it has proven quite efficient despite bringing its own challenges to worker safety and health. My recent consultation examining the changing nature of work, including gig work, automation, and the right to disconnect is making that very, very clear. Thank you for gathering virtually here today to raise awareness of and educate on the importance of creating and maintaining safe workplaces. Every employee has the right to a safe workplace and to return to home safely at the end of their work day. The COVID-19 pandemic is the greatest challenge of our time. Working together, we have been able to preserve Canadian workers' health and safety. Thanks to the CCOHS and its visionary and incredibly hardworking team, including its CEO, the incredible Anne Tenye, we have been able to provide valuable guidance, resources, and tools to help Canadian workers and businesses operate safely during the pandemic and beyond. We also solve problems best when we solve them together. 
And that's what we have been doing. I have said it before and I'll say it again. The minister, as Minister of Labor, I look to the CCOHS as an organization with an international reputation of excellence and a reliable source of objective expert information. Your exceptional work going above and beyond the call of duty is why I was so proud to announce back in September new funding of $2.5 million over the next two years to help you develop additional tools and resources, including more sector specific guidance and a new e-learning uh, tools. And you delivered. COVID-19 has meant that all Canada's industries are experiencing disruptions affecting everyone, employers, workers, their families, and surrounding communities. Many Canadians have lost family, friends, and co-workers as a result of this pandemic. Others have lost their jobs as they are deeply concerned about how they will take care of themselves and their families. That is why we created the new job protected leave related to COVID-19 under the Labour Code, temporarily waived medical certificate requirements for sick leave, and extended the time period given to employers to recall temporary laid off employees. As we work towards an economic recovery that is fair, safe and inclusive, we are making sure our mandate commitments remain at the forefront of our work. These include things like the review of the Employment Equity Act better labor protections for workers in a world where the nature of work is changing, such as gig workers and having the right to disconnect. Ensuring that mental health is a key part of occupational health and safety and preventing harassment and violence. I must highlight the important milestone we reached earlier this year with the coming into force of the harassment and violence prevention legislation, commonly known as Bill C-65 and supporting regulations. These critical changes to the Canada Labour Code protects Canadian workers from harmful behaviours on the job by imp requiring employers to do three things. To prevent incidents of harassment and violence, to respond effectively when those incidents occur, and to support the affected, those affected by harassment and violence in the workplace. During this Safety and Health Week and every day, we're sending a strong message to workers. We hear you, we support you, and we will not allow workplace harassment and violence of any kind to be tolerated in federally regulated workplaces. And once more, we have the privilege to count on the CCOHS to help federally regulated employers comply with the legislation and its regulations. We continue our great collaboration as we develop resources to help create safe, healthy, and respectful workplaces. This week also marks the 70th anniversary of Mental Health Week. Mental health is critical to workplace safety and health. The COVID-19 pandemic has put an even greater strain on our mental health in both our personal and work lives. The fact that many of us, perhaps even a majority, are working remotely. The line between work life and personal life is blurring. And I have had a number of people say they are in, in essence living at work. Health professionals are dealing with the impacts of COVID-19 every day. Essential workers are facing greater risk at work to keep critical goods and services moving. In fact, 40% of Canadians reported that their mental health deteriorated last year. And for those with pre-existing mental health conditions, that number rose to 61%. That clearly shows that making psychological health and safety a key component of occupational health and safety must remain a priority. This is why I have made mental health a majority priority. Every week, 500,000 Canadians miss work due to mental health. This means that mental health is a critical consideration for both Canadian workers and employers. We have consulted and continue to consult with workers, employers, and experts to better understand the problem. And we will continue our consultations to better understand this evolving situation. It is only through an understanding of the facts of workers and employers' experiences that we can develop policy solutions that reflect the diverse needs of federally regulated workplaces. Our government recognizes that we can do more. That's why we are investing to foster a strong and inclusive recovery that recognizes the social and economic factors of mental health. 
For example, to support populations most affected by COVID-19 and dealing with mental health challenges, Budget 2021 delivers $100 million over three years, starting in 2021-22, to the Public Health Agency of Canada. This funding will support projects for innovative mental health interventions for populations disproportionately impacted by COVID-19. This includes healthcare workers, frontline workers, youth, seniors, Indigenous people, and racialized and Black Canadians. We are also investing $62 million this year to ensure that the Wellness Together Canada portal continues to provide Canadians, including workers, with the tools and services to support mental health and well-being. The theme of this year's Mental Health Week is hashtag get real about how you feel. Name it, don't numb it. So how do we do that? One way is by using the tools developed both by the Canadian Mental Health Association as well as the CCOHS. And I want to thank you and the CMHA for making these critical tools available for Canadians. I think that Mental Health Week's website puts it very well. We must be empathetic and support each other. We must talk about mental health openly and without fear. Simple actions matter, whether at work or in our communities. Be kind, respectful. Reaching out to someone who could use a helping hand can have a tremendous impact. We must be honest and understanding when talking about mental health. And I can tell you in 20 years of serving as a chaplain, I experienced in a very real way how the smallest of gestures can make a huge difference in the lives of people. So let's continue to make choices that recognize mental health as a key part of general health in our lives and in our workplaces. In closing, I just want to say how much I appreciate the work that we have been doing together. Even before the pandemic, you have been working hard at creating and maintaining safe workplaces. Your contribution is even more crucial during this very challenging time. I truly value your continued leadership and partnership. I admire your work and your dedication to the cause of workplace health and safety. Thank you for the opportunity to speak today. I wish everyone a positive, enriching safety and health week and mental health week. And I look forward to the rest of uh, this session today. Thanks so much. Great. Thank you very much, Minister. We really appreciate you coming today and sharing your perspective and offering your support. I know you share our goal to make Canada one of the safest countries in the world in which to work. And I do need to add that on behalf of all the staff at CCOHS, we thank you for your amazing support of workplace health and safety and including mental health because we know how important it is to you. So it's now my pleasure to introduce our next guest, Deirdre O'Reilly, the president of the Canadian Society for Safety Engineering, also known as CSSE. CSSE was a founding organization of North American Occupational Health and Safety Week and has been an important partner in this week since it began. I'll hand it over to Deirdre, who is joining us today from Nova Scotia. Thank you very much, Anne, and uh, good day, everyone. The official launch of Safety and Health Week 2021 is here, and it is my absolute pleasure to bring greetings on behalf of the Canadian Society of Safety Engineering, CSSE. Each year, Safety and Health Week offers us a time to reflect on what we do every day, both individually and collectively, to continually improve health and safety. We're inspired toward excellence in our health and safety goals and encouraged to maintain our momentum. This week is an opportunity to reinforce and strengthen our commitment to reducing the impact of injury and illness. Safety and Health Week is dedicated to focusing the attention of employers, employees, partners, and the public on the importance of preventing injury and illness in our workplaces, our homes, and our communities. You know, I have delivered that message at Safety and Health Week launch events many times because I believe in those goals. As a longtime member of CSSE, I'm very proud of what Safety and Health Week represents and of how its goals continue to grow in awareness. When I reflect on those goals today, however, they take on a new significance. Over the past year, the importance of preventing the spread of illness has gained an attention that we have not seen in most of our lifetimes. The health side of safety and health now has a much greater prominence than it has had previously. 
and safety and health practitioners across the country have stepped up to the challenge of tackling an unprecedented threat to the well being of colleagues, families, friends, and neighbors. This past year has also highlighted for me just how interconnected our workplaces, homes, and communities are. For many of us, they are no longer separate spaces. More so than ever before, our homes are our workplaces, and the actions we take or do not take in our communities can have a direct impact on our health and the health of those within our homes. And so the goals and the message of Safety and Health Week continue to be relevant, guiding what we, individually and collectively can accomplish. Together, we can create safe workplaces and communities. I thank each and every one of you for the work you do and for being here today. And on behalf of the Canadian Society of Safety Engineering, I wish you a safe, healthy, and very successful Safety and Health Week. Thank you. Thank you very much, Deirdre, for thank representing much, our health and safety professionals and reminding us of the roles that they play in make our, making our workplaces safer. Our next guest is Shirley Hickman. Shirley is the Executive Director of Threads of Life, also a national partner in Safety and Health Week. But more importantly, Threads is an organization that offers support to families who have experienced a workplace tragedy. Sure, learn for yourself. Shirley, over to you. So first of all, welcome to everyone from across Canada to join us today on celebrating uh, Health and Safety Week across Canada and across the country. And uh, we're joined by uh, other countries, as we know, on celebrating Health and Safety Week. And that's an important piece for us to remember also. So um, think about, I uh, want to bring a message from Threads of Life and our family members. And that's my honor today. And each family member of Threads of Life has a very personal reason to reflect on health and safety this week. Family members are living with a life altering injuries, occupational disease, or the outcome of a traumatic fatality. Each one has a personal uh, message and a personal reason to promote uh, workplace safety. In the chat box, I invite you to share your reason or your commitment to re reflect on health and safety week. So currently, Threads of Life is supporting more than 3,000 Canadian family members. That means there are more than 3,000 stories. And that means that there are also extended families. So each of those stories have hundreds of immediate other ones because there's a huge ripple effect. So that is uh, grandparents, aunts, uncles, cousins, friends, co-workers, employers, first responders, and those who treat all these individuals. And I'm very pleased and honored to be invited to participate in the launch of Health and Safety Week 2021. I know that working together, we can make a difference to prevent future tragedies as we all work together. We need to work as one body, not as individuals. So why is it important to take a week to reflect on workplace health and safety? Well, I think it's because it reminds us that we need to focus as a team. We need to think beyond ourselves, beyond our workplace that you work in every day. And we need to celebrate Health and Safety Week, because it brings us all together. This past weekend, participants in several communities across Canada put on a yellow shirt and they walked in their community in the local park, very small groups in their own family. Normally, we walk in large community groups and hopefully in 2022, we'll all be doing that once again. Yes, the funds raised are important because they support the programs for families who are living with the negative outcome of going to work. So how did I get into the business of workplace safety awareness? 
Well, I believe it's the power of love. The love of our son, Tim, who had a part-time job working in an arena while attending college. He was looking forward to celebrating his 21st birthday with his friends that evening as he headed out the door at 6.30 a.m. I shared the motherly advice on drinking and driving, the designated driver, the whole spiel. And I'm sure I had rehearsed it many times with uh, Tim and with his older brother, Michael. And his response was to spread his peanut butter on his toast faster and remind me that he knew the rules of drinking and driving. Our next conversation was to tell him that we loved him and he would be okay. And that was shortly after 12 noon as he was being offloaded but from the ambulance on to, into the emergency room. In these pictures, they uh, show a young Tim in the middle here. Look at that mischievous smile. And here you see his big brother, Michael, giving him his first kiss. Tim was a natural on ice and he turned to be, and it turned out to be his favorite sport throughout his lifetime. So our family was just like yours. Our family loved. Our family loved to, uh, to just, um, Tim loved to jump on spider webs, and ride on boats. Tim enjoyed cubs, wrestling, hockey, friends, family. Every school year started with uh, um, a photo on the rock on the corner of our family home. And every year that rock got smaller and smaller. I, I learned the challenges of being a mom of a goalie. Tim enjoyed playing goal from a very young age. He was, that was his chosen position on the team. I, on the other hand, did not choose uh, to be the goalie mom. And I found it very difficult to watch pucks go flying at him. And did you ever notice that when the team won, everyone hugged and cheered. And when the team lost, fingers got pointed at the goalie. He lit on too many pucks. I ask, where are the defense players? And we can all relate. Then, Saturday, March the 23rd, at 11.23, the world we knew came crashing down and we would never be the same. That phone call no one wants to make, no one wants to receive, no one dreams they will ever have to because it won't happen. When Tim died, our family had to find a new path, but there was no, but there was no um, book to tell us how. We were very well supported by our family, friends, and our community. We had a strong support and we're very thankful for that. As time went on, we started to search for answers. What we found was a maze of legal nightmares that were waiting for us. We made a commitment to do something positive and productive with our love. I asked myself, where are the other families? I had read articles in the newspaper about other uh, tragedies, people dying at work, but where were their families? Soon I was invited to share Tim's story with different organizations. And over the next five years, and little by little, and with the much support from the health and safety partners, Threads of Life came to be born. I can hardly believe it's 25 years since Tim died. We miss him every day, not just on his birthday or Christmas or Sunday dinners or when major family events occur, but each and every day. Last week, the nation stopped to reflect on the day of mourning. Threads of life families mourn each and every day. Yet, 
Many of them are willing to share their story at your health and safety training events. They want to be part of the prevention system. You read their story in our newsletter. You hear their message at Steps for Life events. They speak to students. The story is not a woe is me story. It's a real picture of the life of a family member, what they enjoyed in life, what happened in the workplace, what can be done for prevention, always with the call to action. Powerful stories, stories to be heard and lessons to be learned, all part of the prevention message and they are all available to you to bring to your schools, to bring to your health and safety events. Is Health and Safety Week more important in 2021? Well, perhaps so. Never has there been a year when everyone has learned more about wearing the proper gear. Wear the mask to protect you and to protect others. 25 years since Tim died. I don't speak of statistics because I believe each and every one is one incident too many. But just take a moment. If we say that 1,000 workers die each year, then that's 25,000 Canadian family members and have died just since Tim died. But those are just the deaths. Those are not people living with occupational disease or life altering injuries. COVID has changed the workplace framework forever. Threads of Life will also be there to support the workers and their family members in the years to come. Families forever changed. Can one person make a difference? Well, I believe so. You, you can share with your, with your friends and your organization that Threads of Life is here to help families. We're here to help them on the dark days, to help them navigate the legal system, to listen. To listen and hopefully help them heal. I believe today you are renewing your commitment to, to workplace health and safety. You will go back to your work with a renewed energy, with a renewed commitment. And the next time you see someone take a shortcut or do something not safe, you will have the courage and the strength to ask them to stop and to take a moment and do it right. I have confidence in you to make a difference. And I have a belief that together we can make workplaces in Canada a safer place. And on behalf of all our family members at Threads of Life, I thank you for uh, coming today for, to the launch of Health and Safety Week 2021. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much, Shirley. I often refer to the work that you do as the reason uh, we do ours. You're our why at the end of the day. And I know you share our hope that one day we'll prevent these tragedies and that there will be no families in need of that kind of support. So this takes us to the finale and one of the highlights of the program. We get to find out who takes the prize in this year's National Youth Video Contest. And this year we had eight videos submitted from the provinces and territories and they were insightful and imaginative and the talent of these youth did not disappoint. Even COVID couldn't possibly curb their creativity. So we're going to start by showing you the third place winning video entitled The Power of Precautionary Measures. On the faraway third rock from the orb in the sky, a planet named Earth was flipped on its side. The year 2020 left Lysa wipes in short supply. COVID-19 spread, but we stood unified. 
We wore our masks and stood six feet apart. Listen to Dr. Bonnie, we all did our part. Everything was altered, but we didn't cease. Let's explore how some young workers did their piece. Scott sat at the table grabbing a bite to eat. He did a health check which he could not complete, for he had a dry cough that just would not stop. His boss said stay home and worry not about the shop. Olivia clocks in at the local eatery. She wears her mask, leaving her face a mystery. She makes sure to keep her mask on at all times, keeping everyone safe and ready for mealtime. Elijah was in the middle of his shift. It was lunch break and he had fish and was dismissed. He kept his distance from his co-workers and ate while following the health orders. Young workers taking precautionary measures can help us lower transmission together. From efforts big to small, we can stay safe from the unseen, helping us to end the fight against COVID-19. That's great. Thank you very much. And our $1,000 third prize goes to Robbie Baker of Hugh Boyd Secondary School in Richmond, British Columbia. Robbie's school will also receive a matching prize. So congratulations, Robbie, it was tremendous. Next, let's take a look at our second place winning video entitled, The Right Gear. Um, this, this video was produced by Nicholas Milcharchik of Resurrection Catholic Secondary School in Waterloo, Ontario. Congratulations, Nicholas, on taking home the $1,500 second prize. Your school will also receive $1,500. Finally, we take a look at the first place winning video entitled Stop the Spread. Bonjour, hi Canada. As we head into the summer season, I would like to present to you a refresher made entirely in dominoes of all the things that you can do at work to help stop the spread of COVID-19 and other infectious diseases. If we work hard and follow these guidelines together, we can achieve a better summer for all. Wear a mask. Masks work by protecting others from your moist speaking. By wearing a mask, you're protecting everyone around you. At your desk or when out in a boot, try to keep two meters between you and your other coworkers. Wash your hands, and when not possible, use hand sanitizer. If you are feeling ill, stay home and get tested. COVID testing is the best way to locate outbreaks and prevent further infections. Self-isolate when you're required to. Ask a friend to deliver groceries to your door and keep in touch with others by phone or video chat. When it's your turn to get vaccinated, please do. It's the best way to achieve herd immunity. To put things in perspective, let's say you are this green domino, which unknowingly has COVID-19. When you go out into the world, you run the risk of contaminating others. It doesn't have to be that way. By wearing a mask and keeping social distance, you limit your exposure to others, and therefore you help keep Canada safe. Restez en sécurité. Stay safe, Canada. 
Et bravo! I'm pleased to present our $2,000 first place prize to Etienne Folks of École François Buat in Charlottetown, Prince Edward Island. Congratulations, Etienne. This is very well deserved and so creative. Uh, would you like to say a few words? Hello. Oh my goodness. I wow. I'm so honored. Um, this is this was surreal to be able to watch my video um, that I made in my bedroom, you know, late at night, and I filmed it on my phone. Really, it's just this is incredible, and it's such an honor to be. Um, among all of you very nice people um, who believe in something so powerful and important. Uh, this project really taught me so much about uh, health and safety at work. And for that, I would like to thank the CCOHS for putting this project uh, into place and giving me the platform to, to explain what I believe in. Uh, I would like to thank Claire Waddell, my supervisor, uh, and the project coordinator who inspired me to make this video. Also, I would like to thank my school, Ecole Francaise Burat, in uh, Charlottetown, Prince Edward Island. Um, and also my teacher, Madame Melanie, who uh, signed off on the video and supported me. Um, also, I would like to thank my sister, who uh, filmed the, intro the, the introduction video. We must have filmed it at least 26 times. 20, that's minimum. Um, because I will, I, if I slipped up once, uh, she had to film it again. So thank you so much for filming that and bearing with me. I'd like to thank my dad for giving me his computer to, to do all the editings on. Um, and so in the video, I use dominoes. And that's really a passion that I've had uh, for quite a while. And I really never knew that a passion like that could bring me here and could be a, a medium to be able to convey my ideas and I think that's really powerful and also the domino effect works as an analogy um, for safety at work so for for accidents to happen there needs to be so many bits in place that have to go wrong so maybe by by making these videos and all the other videos there that all helps to lift up awareness and try to make sure that nothing ever happens like that again uh, and on that note, I would like to end by saying, uh, stay safe, Canada. Et bravo, Etienne. Thank you very much. And we wish you very, all the best in your future creative endeavors. I'm guessing this isn't going to be your last video. So before we close, I want to thank our panel of very busy judges for their time in evaluating the videos. So we thank Audrey Gilbo. Executive Director of Noki Win Tribal Council, Shirley Hickman, Executive Director of Threads of Life, and Troy Winters, Senior Health and Safety Officer of Health and Safety for the Canadian uh, Union of Public Employees. And Troy is also in our Council of Governors, I have to add, add that as well. And finally, thank you to all of you for spending some time uh, with us today. This virtual kickoff is a first for us, and although it's not the same as being together face to face, it really has allowed more people than ever to attend and be part of the national launch. Health and Safety Week is only one week, but our commitment to creating workplaces and environments that are physically and psychologically safe must remain strong day in, day out, all year long. So on behalf of our guests, our national partners and staff here at CCOHS, I wish you all a good health, safety and health week and hope you'll take care. There is a light at the end of the COVID tunnel. So till next year, à l'an prochain, merci tout le monde, and thank you, everyone. Have a great week.